focus on this next issue to both of you because it really brings us uh, this into focus, truth uh, in these times that we're living in. Uh, Mr. President, for three and a half years after uh, you lost the 2020 election, you repeatedly uh, falsely claimed that you won, many times saying you won in a landslide. In the past couple of weeks leading up to this debate, uh, you have said, quote, you lost by a whisker, that you, quote, didn't quite make it, that you came up a little bit short. I are said you, that. Are you now acknowledging that you lost in 2020? No, I don't acknowledge that at all. But I you said did that say sarcastically. That. You but know that. It was said, oh, we lost by a whisker. That was said sarcastically. Look, there's so much proof. All you have to do is look at it. And they should have sent it back to the legislatures for approval. I got almost 75 million votes, the most votes any sitting president has ever gotten. I was told if I got 63, which was what I got in 2016, you can't be beaten. Uh, the election, people should never be thinking about it. An election is fraudulent. We need two things. We need walls. We need, and we have to have it. We have to have borders, and we have to have good elections. Our elections are bad. And a lot of these illegal immigrants coming in, they're trying to get them to vote. They can't even speak English. They don't even know what country they're in practically. And these people are trying to get them to vote. And that's why they're allowing them to come into our country. I did watch. All yeah, I mean, just... Typical racist garbage from Trump. Um, like, there are all kinds of people here who aren't just immigrants, but are, like, first-generation Americans who don't speak English, or English isn't their first language. You know, Trump is, um, Trump does not have, like, the mental savvy to be uh, saving his campaign. Um, you know, it's very much like a dying animal stuck in a corner, right? Um, and you can tell that that's the case with so many of his responses to these things, and it's just kind of gross to see, you know, he just goes on and on, right? He just kind of keeps talking until he gets what he's trying to get, uh, you know, sold, sold, right? Um, and he can just say as much nonsense as he wants, um, especially with denying his um, uh, election victory denial of claims, right? Like claiming that the election was stolen and stuff like that. Uh, he's like denying that and saying, uh, excuse me, he like conceded uh, sarcastically, right? He like laughed sarcastically, like this is all just a joke to Trump, you know? And I'm, I was complaining about the liberal response um, to uh, to Trump and how they don't take it seriously. And I'll, I stand by all that I said. But, you know, at the end of the day, like Trump is ridiculous. Like he is insane and and completely out of touch. And, uh, you know, it's just it's a very I don't know. It's a very. Um, He's just not a good person, man. It's just it's just weird to see the Republican Party like in shams like this because they've been like such a dominant political entity for so long. Um, and, you know, the Democrats have been like either like intentionally rendered um, incompetent or like we're just accidentally incompetent. But now that they're starting to show not genuine, inc uh, genuine competence, but some signs of that, uh, you know, I just I just it's just weird. Um yeah, I guess, like, Trump is such a, you know, alt-right, like, wild-card clown that, you know, he's like, oh, you can't go that fascist to the elites, right? Like, they, they see him as, like, too much, right? Uh, they need someone who is going to do all the stuff that they want, right? Like, literally building the wall, right? Like, that's literally, you know, literally what Kamala Harris's campaign, one of her major campaign promises are, um, as if, uh, you know, she wasn't just saying that all that stuff was racist years ago. I, I just... Yeah, it's just disingenuous. Um, you know, Trump is uh, full of crap, as always. Um, all garbage, you know. Uh, so let's continue. All of these pieces of video, I, I didn't detect the sarcasm, lost by a whisker, we didn't quite make it. And we should just point out here as clarification, and you know this, you and your allies, 60 cases in front of many judges, many of them no Republican. No judge looked at it. And said they there was said no we didn't have standing. Uh, That's the other thing. They said we didn't have standing, a technicality. Can you imagine a system where a person in an election doesn't have standing, the president of the United States doesn't have standing. That's how we look. This is what I'm talking about. Like, they should be muting his mic. They should, but no, but they got to get the sound bite, you know, because it's a clickable moment. It's a clippable moment, you know? Uh, and David, whatever the hell his name is, um, is just kind of, kind of like literally, you know, because again, like these people are, you know, everyone understands like trump is ridiculous but no one is strong enough to like go against trump and that's because they're liberals and they're pathetic and they're weak um and because if you actually had convictions and you actually had things you would stand for then you could go against trump right but trump stands for like insanity narcissism himself right but that's still standing for something so he can just bulldoze these questions bolt like they're they're not wrangling him at all he's a complete like 
you know, I'm sure people will walk away saying like Trump is like insane and ridiculous for what he is as like Americans are deciding to care about politics more. But he, uh, you know, I just um, I'm getting really sick of like, you know, this is no longer about Trump. And this is about the fact that like liberals have no idea how to deal with Trump um, and that they're just mad that he's like shaking up the game. Uh, and again, a very reactionary bad way. This, he's a fascist like in every way. Um but it's not like they actually have a problem with his policies, right? Like economic control, border security. That's literally like Kamala Harris's campaign is a Republican campaign. So there is nothing. Um, it's strictly like an aesthetics and optics thing. Uh, and it, it, even when it's just that, I mean, we all know Trump is a charlatan, right? And that's not enough. Like that, even even the blatant nature of Trump's degeneracy is not enough incentive, is not enough call for people to be uh, trying to wrangle him, trying to shut him down, be like, stop like stop stop talking stop you know no, nobody's everyone's just a lame person who just gets bent over for the powers that be because they're americans and because they're liberals or because they're like conservatives and support the status quo like you need a revolutionary attitude to deal with not just trump but both of these people and nothing's gonna get better as long as we keep as long as we keep staying the same all right yeah i mean he, he's just allowed to go on and on and on and say whatever the hell he wants lost if you look at the facts, and I'd love to have you do, do a special on it, I'll show you Georgia, and I'll show you Wisconsin, and I'll show you Pennsylvania, and I'll show you... We have so many facts and statistics, but you know what? That doesn't matter, because we have to solve the problem that we have right now. That's old news. And the problem that we have right now is we have a nation in decline, and they have put it into decline. We have a nation that is dying, David. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, Vice President Harris, uh, you heard the president there tonight. He said he didn't say that, that he lost by whisker. So he still uh, believes uh, he did not lose the election. Uh, that was won by President Biden uh, and yourself. Uh, but I do want to ask you about something that's come up in the last couple of days. This was a post from uh, President Trump uh, about this upcoming election uh, just weeks away. He said, when I win, those people who cheated, and then he lists donors, voters, election officials, he says will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, which will include long-term prison sentences. One of your campaign's top lawyers responded saying, we won't let Donald Trump intimidate us. We won't let him suppress the vote. Is that what you believe he's trying to do here? Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. So let's be clear about that. And clearly he is having a very difficult time processing that. But we cannot. Okay, that was excellent. That was, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, that was fantastic, you know? And you could tell, you know, she, that was good. I'm glad, I'm glad that's good. That's a sign of, pul a pulse, wow, amazing, from Kamala Harris, um, great stuff, what a, I don't know who cooked that up, but that's a that's a good line right there because you know it's going to get under his skin. It uses the rhetoric he does. It uses the perspective that he does. A fired by 81 million people. Like, that sounds exactly like something Trump would say. Like, ooh, that's that's great stuff, you know. Uh, I'm going to do a whole lot of criticizing of this because they're charlatans and uh, imperial losers and genocide supporters. But um, to see that there's, like, political competency, I guess... <laughs> Oh my God, things in America are so bad that like seeing co political competency from like an emperor is like a good thing. It's like, oh, thank God, at least they can like breathe correctly. Like, oh my God, uh, you know, as that kind of shows even I'm guilty of just like being willing to go along with what's going on, uh, even subconsciously when I'm trying to dissent and disagree um, with like just trying to get to the to back to the stability and status quo, you know. Um, but I think that's like a really, really good that's a really good line. Um, it's a really, you know, I'm wondering, we'll see how, how that affects him. That's a good way of, uh, and I like how she like measured him. He watched, uh, she watched to see what his reaction would be and stuff too, to, uh, to deal with that. I don't know. It's good to see some maneuvering, but at the end of the day, it's not enough so far. I cannot afford to have a president of the United States who attempts, as he did in the past, to upend the will of the voters in a free and fair election. And I'm going to tell you that I have traveled the world as vice president of the United States, and world leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. I have talked with military leaders, some of whom work with you, and they say you're a disgrace. And when you then talk in this way in a presidential debate and deny what over and over again are court cases you have lost because you did, in fact, lose that election, it leads one to believe 
that perhaps we do not have in the candidate to my right the temperament or, or the ability to not be confused about fact. That's deeply troubling, and the American people deserve better. I'll give you one minute to respond. Yep, I was waiting for that. I was waiting for disappointment. Um, yep, just referencing law and order politics. Like, the only reason anybody in this country dislikes Trump is because Trump does what to Americans, what Americans have been doing to everyone else around the world. And Americans can't stand that. Um, you know, I, I, I despise Trump <clears throat> in every way. He's, he's a rat and an animal. Um, but that's, like, obvious, you know, and blatant. Like, Kamala Harris is portraying herself as, like, this reasonable option. Like, she isn't also flipping on her policies. Like, there aren't also all kinds of complaints about <laughs> her interactions with either foreign leaders or domestic leaders. Um, you know, and I, as I was saying earlier, like, they're just going to use these points to skew things in a certain way. Um and as much as like she's doing a decent job of like trying to convey the American perception around Trump, um, I think it's just always again, it's this fascination with law and order politics. Um, you know, it's more important to Americans that like Kamala Harris isn't tweeting crazy stuff than stopping a genocide. Um, and so when stuff like that happens, you know, you're going to get people that like me, that's like, why do you guys deserve better then? if you're not going to care about people dying in a genocide to your own tax dollars, like. Um, you know, and, and I think it also shows a level of like incompetence and ignorance as well. Uh, not, not Americans fault. They've been intentionally made that way, but it is their responsibility to change and they're not doing that. So they're culpable in that way. Um, I just, I don't know I feel like, I feel, I just wish she was better at cooking. You know, she like, she's good at like whipping out a point, you know? And then like, it's like, Oh, that's good. But then like when it's time to cook with it, she like under, it's like undercooking. It's either overcooks or undercook, like no, no good cooking, you know? And obviously Trump is a perpetual overcooker, right? But like, you know, having burnt food or burnt and raw food, like there's, it's lesser evil. Vo yeah, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, you know, I just hope people aren't uh, getting getting too uh, convinced by this, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. Let's continue. Well, Mr. President. Hey, let me just tell you about world leaders. Victor Orban, one of the most respected men, they call him a strong man. He's a, he's a tough person, smart, prime minister of Hungary. They said, why is the whole world blowing up? Three years ago, it wasn't. Why is it? Okay, I just want to say real quick, uh, Orban is not the person he should be trying to, you know, Orban is not a good person. Hungary does not have a good reputation right now uh, under Orban's, uh, I don't know if he's a prime minister or president. Um, this is not a good man, you know. When people call him a strong man, like, that's a right-wing dog whistle. Um, not that Trump would know that. Not that conservatives would know that. Um Again, I mean, Kamala Harris is doing a good job of portraying, like, correct body language, but, I mean, like, it's very obvious, like, it's it's stoic, like, I mean, at least to me, it's obvious that it's, like, put on, uh, and she has to, like, kind of, you know, um, basically, like, puff out her chest, right, like, as any person would, uh, especially as, like, a woman running in politics, you kind of have to deal with, like, all kinds of, um, you know, like, misogynistic uh, and, like, uh, patriarchal, like, you know, BS along the way, um, however, She's still just doing, like, this blanket, you know, I'm seeing her responses right now, and I'm seeing, like, the exact same stuff from Biden back in the 2020 election, like, you know, just kind of, like, I'll, like, convey that I'm listening to him sometimes, but I'll laugh when I, he's saying a lot and, like, roll my eyes and shake my head, you know, like, um, and it's good, like, that is what she should do, they should both do, but both of them in both of these instances keep showing that like do it in like a very performative, reactive manner, not in like an organic matter. Uh, and there's been a couple times where she like reacts organically. Um, but since at the end of the day, she's a corporate, like, dude, she's perpetuating a genocide. Okay. If any of you motherfuckers are out here thinking that this is a good person, you are delusional to your core. All right. You're completely out of touch with reality. All right. And they're purposely trying to sell you on this. They're trying, you know, they're doing a good job of like, Americans should be able to project themselves onto Kamala Harris, right? The average person, especially who's super anti-Trump because Trump is so unpopular, understandably, very correctly in this country, that they'll just like, people can just project themselves right onto Kamala uh, because, you know, of like, they're, you know, they're, we're all listening to Trump and he's insane. Um, but she's not giving like, she's just not giving the performance I would have expected or, or desired. Um, I, I really... Like, she was tougher on Joe Biden in the 2020 uh, primaries than she's being tough on Trump right now. 
Uh, she's using like one-liners and stuff. I mean, they're good at like jabbing at him. Uh, but she was like, she really sat with Joe Biden for like three minutes straight and grilled him about buses and like, you know, where is that? Like, where is that? You know, um, I don't know. It's just like uh, in pursuit of like respectability politics and law and order politics. Like, there's going to be a whole lot of um, putting the gloves on, pulling your punches and stuff. Uh, because you have to put on this idea that things are like civil and fair, right? But what made Trump so successful is that he doesn't abide by that, and he can just bulldoze through all these things like a fascist would. Uh, but that was popular with that was a popular sentiment within Americans, even though it wasn't a good thing, uh, because people are so sick of this kind of corporate, not just Democrat, but also Republicans as well. Um, you know, kind of like being out in the fold and being in every everyone's faces as like the only options they have available. Um, so again, I just, dude, the only reason anyone likes Kamala Harris is because Americans are so broken and conditioned uh, into believing that this is the all this is the best we can do and that there's no way around it. Um, but that's that's all horse crap. So I, I just yeah, um, I really wish Kamala was doing more and I really wish uh, you know Trump was getting shut down more. They're letting him I don't know why people just let Trump do this stuff, but all right. Um, yeah, all right. Let's uh, let's continue. Blowing up. He said, because you need Trump back as president. They were afraid of him. China was afraid, and I don't like to use the word afraid, but I'm just quoting him. China was afraid of him. North Korea was afraid of him. Look at what's going on with North Korea, by the way. He said, Russia was afraid of him. I ended the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, and Biden put it back on day one, but he ended the XL pipeline. The XL pipeline in our country, he ended that. But he let the Russians build a pipeline going all over Europe and heading into Germany, the biggest pipeline in the world. Look, Viktor Orban said it. He said the most respected, most feared person is Donald Trump. We had no problems when Trump was president. But when this weak, pathetic man that you saw at a debate just a few months ago that if he weren't in that debate he'd be running instead of her she got no votes he got 14 million votes what you did you talk about a threat to democracy he got 14 million votes and they threw him out of office and you know what i'll give you a little secret he hates her he can't stand her Mr. but he President. got 14 million votes they threw him out she got zero votes and when she ran she was the first one to leave because she failed and now she's running. I don't understand it, but Mr. I'm President, okay with it because your time is I up. think Thank we're going to do very well. We've got a lot more. Ooh, ooh. See, this is this is what I like about Trump. He takes the gloves off, you know? Um, this is because we need, Americans need to sh see that our politicians are all like bloodthirsty savages who deserve like, you know, uh, redacted, redacted, redacted. Um, and, uh, you know, that's been true for a very long, you know, that is uh, like, I've, you know, I've known that, uh, but and, but it hasn't been like super obvious. Uh, but the fact that like Trump is literally saying that kind of really, really seals the deal for me. Um, because I remember, you know, back in the primary in 2020, uh, it was very clear even back then that Kamala Harris was going to be the VP pick because everyone could tell that um, the corporate Democrats are going to coalesce around Joe Biden to prevent Bernie Sanders from getting the ticket nomination. Um and, uh, you know, you could kind of see, like, whether it's back then, whether it's during the campaign, whether it's, you know, um, like, even press conferences where, like, Kamala's trying to figure out whether she should, like, step up next to him or not. Um, there is clearly some level of, like, annoyance um, that's, you know, kind of not being conveyed in a very, like, House of Cards style. Um, and even if Trump was saying false things, which, I mean, he could be, uh, I don't think that's, I think that's true. Like, I... You know, you could even see a little bit of glimmer in her when I said that, you know, a little bit like, oh, crap, he's starting to get to something real. Right. And that goes back. What I'm saying is like Trump's whole thing works if he just lies and lies and lies and keeps talking. Right. But what happens when he tells the truth? I'm like on those blue moon moments that they had because they do happen. Right. If you just keep constantly talking, you're eventually going to a broken clock. Right. You're going to eventually say something correct. Um, but, you know, he can just say a bunch of nonsense, um, you know, and as long as everybody else is so fixated on all this nonsense, they're not going to believe this stuff that is true, um, but I, I don't know, it's kind of nice to see, uh, I don't know, it's, that's like real, that's like real, uh, it's real, it's reality, you know, like that there's, there's actual animosity between like the Democratic, uh, you know, party ticket for the last uh, election and presidency, um, like there's some kind of idea that everything's like going along really well, uh, 
<clears throat> excuse me. I just, um, I just, I don't know, man. I'm just, like, really unimpressed with Kamala Harris. Like, Donald Trump is, like, a degenerate who needs to be redacted. Like, I don't, you know, there's there's nothing redeemable about this. Uh, but Americans are so broken uh, and malleable that they will, you know, project themselves on Kamala Harris, understandably. Uh, I mean, I'm doing the same, like I've mentioned in this interview, watching, like, we're all, you know, she is us, right? We're all watching Trump being like, what the hell is happening? Like, what is he doing? Uh, but you, like, she is a corporate politician, okay? Just because she's not senile like Biden doesn't mean she's not exactly like him, all right? But since she invokes identity politics, you know, uh, oh, Christ, she doesn't even have, like, a democratic platform. Like, her platform is right-wing. It's, like, it's, it's right-wing, textbook right-wing. Border control, small business subsidies, uh, first-time home buyers, like that's all right out of the Republican uh, Republican playbook. At, at best, uh, neoliberalism. At best, like Clinton style. But even then, um, yeah, I just I don't know. It's kind of I don't know. Let's uh, let's continue. See where things go. I guess. More to get to. Turning now yes. to the Israel Hamas war and the hostages who are still being held, Americans among them. Vice President Harris, in December, you said, quote, Israel has a right to defend itself, but you added, quote, it matters how, saying international humanitarian law must be respected. Israel must do more to protect innocent civilians. You said that nine months ago. Now an estimated 40,000 Palestinians are dead. Nearly 100 hostages remain. Just last week, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said there's not a deal in the making. President Biden has not been able to break through the stalemate. How would you do it? Yeah, I just want to say real quick, I love how like mainstream media loves to paint themselves like they're this neutral force, like they weren't saying Palestinians are terrorists and like bomb all Hamas and like, you know, Israel needs to support himself and like all Palestinians are like, you know, terrorist degenerate, like they were literally saying all of that stuff. Um, but again, the spectacle, their performance, the theater, Americans will eat it all up. You'll, you, you will all buy this. You see the legitimacy. You see, you see how the, the money being made, the optics, the, the makeup, the filters, the, you know, all of this stuff that's being thrown into the optics of the situation, and you will be bought by. Seconds weren't wasn't this mainstream media just literally covering Trump the entire time from 2016 election during his entire Trump presidency, creating all of this clout for him, all of this like you know, and then they totally acted like they had no participation in that whatsoever, right? Like the mainstream media hasn't been deliberately um, at manufacturing consent for a genocide. Like, uh, I mean, oh, but if they ask the president, the, you know, ask the question to Kamala Harris, who you know again should be doing something about it, but like you know, you know. I don't know, like, out of, like, like, she's in some ways, like, the least powerful person out of the four people in this room. Like, the two news anchors have had way more power with, like, mainstream media. So, I mean, we'll see what her answer is in a second. I just think it's disgusting how, like, mainstream media is so soulless. They have, they're, they're like, uh, like that one episode of Spongebob where he like comes super normal. It's like, hi, hello there, hi. And he's like, has no person out. Like that's every news anchor ever. They have no soul. There's nothing. They're so filtered, so edited, so so micromanaged that there's nothing humane there. Um, let's, let's, oh my God, let's just continue. See where this is going to go. Well, let's understand how we got here. On October 7, Hamas a terrorist organization slaughtered 1,200 Israelis, many of them young people who were simply attending a concert. Women were horribly raped. And so absolutely, I said then, I say now, Israel has a right to defend itself. We would. And how it does so matters. Because it is also true, far too many innocent Palestinians have been killed, children, mothers, what we know is that this war must end. It must win, end immediately, and the way it will end is we need a ceasefire deal and we need the hostages out. And so we will continue to work around the clock on that. Work around the clock also understanding that we must chart a course for a two-state solution. And in that solution, there must be 
security for the Israeli people and Israel, and in equal measure for the Palestinians. But the one thing I will assure you always, I will always give Israel the ability to defend itself, in particular as it relates to, as it relates to Iran and any threat that Iran and its proxies pose to Israel. But we must have a two-state solution where we can rebuild Gaza, where the Palestinians have security, self-determination, and the dignity they so rightly deserve. Uh, President Netanyahu has explicitly stated multiple times there will never be a two-state solution or a ceasefire. They literally killed um, the the leader of Hamas who was leading the negotiations in Iran. They they killed him in Iran. I'm pretty sure. Not even like in their quote unquote own country, which again is an illegitimate <coughs> excuse me is an illegitimate authority. Uh, yeah, just typical both sides nonsense from a liberal Zionist. Um, you know, completely disingenuous stuff. Um, you can tell that they kind of had to like edit the points, right? Like, why does Israel have to defend itself? Like, oh, against Iran, right? Like against Iran. Oh, the Iranian government, right? Um, uh, which is not at all relevant at all. And the only reason that Iran has amped up any like uh, geopolit, and not just Iran, but a- a- any other like. Um, uh, like Arab or just like not Israeli, not Western nation in that region, um, you know, has been doing the same thing of, of just, uh, I, 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 oh my God, like there's so much, like, where do I even start, man? Um, yeah, Net- Netanyahu is never going to do a two state solution. She's literally bringing up something that Biden has said they're not going to do. I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, but as long as she can just like, give a sufficient answer, right, and nobody holds anybody accountable to anything, I mean, if they're not going to hold Trump accountable, why would they hold Kamala Harris accountable? So, uh, you know, she'll just say all this stuff about how Palestinians need security or whatever, and, um, you know, that'll be, that'll be sufficient. That'll be enough for how many liberals who, like, vaguely care about Palestinians be like, see, she said it in the debate one time, so she cares. And uh, more Palestinian children will die. So I'm glad we got, we're got. we all listening to what you guys are saying. I don't know what we would have done if we did something different. You know, if we actually took things into our own hands. We might have been able to save people, you know. But but I guess that's like crazy or something. So uh, it's a good thing that dead children are, uh, are you know, happening left and right. Because Israel needed to defend itself. Thank you, Kamala Harris. Let's continue. And Trump, how would you negotiate with Netanyahu and also Hamas in order to get the hostages out and prevent the killing of more innocent civilians in Gaza. If I were president, it would have never started. If I were president, Russia would have never, ever, I know Putin very well, he would have never, and there was no threat of it either, by the way, for four years, have gone into Ukraine and killed millions of people when you add it up. Far worse than people understand what's going on over there. But when she mentions about Israel, all of a sudden, She hates Israel. She wouldn't even meet with Netanyahu when he went to Congress to make a very important speech. She refused to be there because she was at a sorority party of hers. She wanted to go to the sorority party. She hates Israel. If she's president, I believe that Israel will not exist within two years from now. And I've been pretty good at predictions, and I hope I'm wrong about that one. She hates Israel. I hope he's right about that. That would be amazing if Israel would not exist in two. God, that'd be amazing. Please don't threaten me with a good time. Please. God, that'd be so amazing. Just more lies from Trump. Classic, classic. At the same time, in her own way, she hates the Arab population because the whole place is going to get blown up. Arabs, Jewish people, Israel. Israel will be gone. It would have never happened. Iran was broke under Donald Trump. Now Iran has $300 billion because they took off all the sanctions that I had. Iran had no money for Hamas or Hezbollah or any of the 28 different uh, spheres of terror. And they are spheres of terror, horrible terror. They had no money. It was a big story, and you know it. You covered it very well, actually. They had no money for terror. They were broke. Now they're a rich nation, and now what they're doing is they're spreading that money around. Look at what's happening with the Houthis and Yemen. Look at what's going on in the Middle East. This would have never happened. I will get that settled and fast, and I'll get the war with Ukraine and Russia ended. If I'm president-elect, I'll get it done before even becoming president. Vice President Harris. Yeah, I mean, just... 
constantly spewing nonsense, constantly just talking like, you know, Trump's a bullshitter. So he's just going to constantly keep talking and saying nonsense. And I guess the strategy is to like just walk away and turn the other cheek, which, all right, not going to work well. Um, yeah, it just, you know, he's like not even coherent, um, you know, and that's why that's why people are getting behind Kamala so well. That's why she's becoming so popular is because Trump really is that bad. Uh, and she is like good enough in comparison to him in a way that Biden wasn't. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, I don't know, man. Like, why does, why, like, people just let him do this. Turn off his mic. Like, tell him to get him control. Like, somebody, like, get some balls and, like, deal with this man. Like, what, what is this? Like, I don't, if you can't even, like, get him to, like, handle himself in a debate, how can you, like, convey that you're going to be, like, tough on him? I just, uh, all right. Mm hmm. Okay. All okay, right. Harris, he says you hate Israel. Uh, that's absolutely not true. I have my entire career and life supported Israel and the Israeli people. He knows that he's trying to, again, divide and, and distract from the reality, which is it is very well known that Donald Trump is weak and wrong on national security and foreign policy. It is well known that he admires dictators, wants to be a dictator on day one, according to himself. It is well known that he said of Putin that he can do whatever the hell he wants and go into Ukraine. It is well known that he said when Russia went into Ukraine, it was brilliant. It is well known he exchanged love letters with Kim Jong-un. And it is absolutely well known that these dictators and autocrats are rooting for you to be president again because they're so clear they can manipulate you with flattery and favors. And that is why so many military leaders who you have worked with have told me you are a disgrace. That is why we understand that we have to have a president who is not consistently weak and wrong on Vice national president security, Harris. including the importance of upholding and respecting in highest regard our military. Vice President Harris. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, again, just goes back to the optics, right? She's doing a good job of, like, conveying, um, you know, like, uh, you know, conveying these points, right? But again, as I was saying, like, having good, le like, relations with Kim Jong-un in Korea, like, Americans are the people who think that North Korea is, like, this evil, like, again, all lies. All of this is, you know, again, and if you think what I'm telling you is, if you think I'm some idiot who doesn't know that North Korea is, like, a just, it's like, okay, let's just address this in a very, very simple way. I had no idea that you trusted the American government this much. I had no idea that you trusted everything they tell you about China, the DPRK, Cuba. You, you trust them on everything. You eat that up. You, you take every word. You copy and paste it right into your brain. You call yourself a free-thinking person, and you just believe every single thing that the U.S. State Department tells you or the government tells you or Kamala Harris tells you. No, no thinking about it whatsoever. Trump is a laughingstock for sure. Um, but when it comes to like, you know, like geopolitical, like meddling and stuff, uh, you know, he, he's a valuable ally to like strongman, um, people. Right. Uh, and that's not talking about like Xi Jinping or Kim Jong-un. Like I'm talking about like, you know, like Westerners <laughs> and not just like Orban either. Uh, Hungary isn't necessarily the West, but it is in this context, like, you know, um, people can complain like Angela Merkel or Justin Trudeau can complain about Trump's, um, you know, kind of like abrasive nature or whatever. Um, but if, I, dude, oh my God. Um, like, I don't, like, look, you know, Kamala Harris will make herself like a very respectable person, right? Like the same way that Biden or Obama or Clinton did too, right? She's not going to be any different. Um, but she's just as like slimy as the rest of them. Um, and again, it's just another disingenuous point of like, <sighs> I don't, I'm, you know. I, I, like, I want Kamala Harris to be a person who's going to fight for people, but she's not. Uh, and every, all Americans, especially if you're against Trump, like, like I am, you know, you think that, like, she might be able to be some kind of help right now because of things, how bad things are getting. But I'm, I'm telling you, like, no, I'm telling you, things are going to get worse. Harris, thank you. They're the ones, and she's the one 
that caused it. That's weak on national security by allowing every nation last month for the year, 168 different countries sending people into our country. Their crime weights are way down. Putin endorsed her last week, said, I hope she wins. And I think he meant it because what he's gotten away with is absolutely incredible. It wouldn't have happened with me. The Again, just to like illustrate how bad Trump's doing, like he literally just said a few minutes ago that he's like so on great terms with Putin, great friends with him, but now it's now he's super bad. And yeah, I mean, and so because Trump is such a loser who's like kind of kicking and screaming and drowning like in the water, like screaming for a life raft, uh, you know, the, the liberals and the Democratic establishment, the status quo, right, all the powers that be that, that are sick of him and want to get rid of him are going to, uh, you know, kind of uh, capitalize on all of these optics and aesthetics fronts in order to uh, to win, even though at the end of the day, there is no real materially strong policy from liberals, liberal politicians, liberal ideology in any way whatsoever, especially in America. Um, I just, I don't know. I mean, I get it. Like Trump, you know, I get it, right? Because like Trump is saying so much nonsense nonstop, but he's just... Um, he's just a byproduct of like American politicians, politicians saying BS nonstop. I mean, Kamala Harris literally just talked about how like we're gonna get a two-state solution and Israel, to, to, you know, deserves to defend its. Uh, Israel has a right to defend itself, right? Uh, and since she said it in like a confident, commanding way, like mindless West Coast liberals will eat that crap right up, uh, and you'll be like, wow, she's so confident, strong, girl boss, Brett's. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, Americans! Ah, oh, she was vice president for four years. They had the entire chance, the entire, ch the entire time. They could have done anything about Re Roe v. Wade. Anything, especially for those first two years when they had majority Democrats in the Senate and uh and the House of Representatives. They did nothing, guys. They had two years of being in office, and they did nothing for abortion. So if that's not obvious enough, why would you be dumb enough to think that it would be different otherwise? Because you're dumb, because you're gullible, because you're broken and you can't, you, you are terrified to believe that you can do better, that you deserve better, that this country can do better, okay? And we're also so hellbent on accepting this is the way things are, this is the way things are, this, like, no, grow up, stop. Okay, we used to think that clean air used to be a thing too, but now it's fucking polluted all the time because the earth, the earth is on fire all the time. All right, shut up, think for two seconds, put some intellectual effort into what is going on. on in any way, get a hold of yourself. What the hell is wrong with you? Oh my God. Holy Christ. And like, people are going to get so, I can tell now, they're going to be, people are going to accuse me of supporting Trump and being like a misogynist or racist or something like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, it's all happening. Like, I'm, I'm literally just like seeing the next four years, like in my mind right now. And uh, an entire, entire, Americans are going to have to learn the hard way yet again. Like we didn't just see with eight years of Obama, four years of Biden. Uh, I forgot Clinton was four or eight. I think it was eight. Eight years. Like, dude, you all know how these people work. And you're still, still, like, again. So, so when Americans do stuff like this, and they, 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 when Americans do stuff like this, I don't have empathy for you anymore, okay? And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fucking, like, take your shit. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I don't care if you don't care what I think. You already don't care. I'm a communist. My entire life, nobody's cared what I think. All right, but now, now I'm giving you, like, actual reasons that you have no ground to stand on, and you have no real argument against it. And all your best arguments are just, like, these stupid little gripes that you don't even understand, you don't even fully believe in. You guys all just started getting into politics. I've, I've been doing this since there haven't been pubes on my balls. Like, that's how long I've been doing. I've been doing this for over 13 years since I was a child. Like, I, I this is ingrained into me. Like, I... And, and all of you who are well-meaning who are getting into politics just now, like, I need you to understand you are being sold a product and you are eating it right up and you need to stop and think for a second. Hold some scrutiny, right? Th think, right? Th like, think about it, 
right? Like the, the, the wealthy of this country see Trump as the problem is he is because he's so uh, he stirs the pot so much, right? The powers that be want Kamala Harris as president. OK, and you're not pausing to think about this. You're not putting it. No, because she said she she like laughed and smiled at how, how ridiculous Trump is being. Right. And Trump said that crazy stuff about immigrants earlier, which, again, was like insane. Um, but you're like genuinely like brain rotted to the core. And I'd suggest like potentially getting mental health help like today, actually, if you could, um, if you're not paying attention to the fact that uh, I, you know, man, I like I'm I'm uh I, 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 I don't, yeah, I just. Leaders of other countries think that they're weak and incompetent, and they are. They're grossly incompetent. And I just ask one question. Why does Biden go in and kill the Keystone Pipeline and approve the single biggest deal that Russia's ever made, Nord Stream 2, the biggest pipeline anywhere in the world going to Germany and all over Europe? because they're weak and they're ineffective. And Biden, by the way, President gets paid Trump, a lot of money. Thank you, we have a lot of issues. Yeah, I mean, there it is. Like, there's another, that he's bringing up the point that President Biden is inconsistent on, on oil, that they claimed in the 2020 election that we need green energy transition and we need to make a new economy that's going to be suitable for more Americans. And as long as they just keep filibustering as a politician, I mean, I could do that. Um, then it just fills in the blank, right? Uh, but since Trump is so insane and so incoherent, uh, and since all Americans are very, very, very dumb, very, very, very dumb, in a way that they deserve to be regularly insulted for it, for sure. Um, and if you disagree, I'm only going to insult you more. Um, you, you are the, we are the most destructive people in the history of the world, uh, and you can eat my ass if you're, if you're not paying attention uh, and disagree. Um, literally, yet again, Trump like accidentally said something truthful, right? And Kamala is just allowed to like aesthetically like optically like laugh it off just like scoff at him right um because americans are so politically illiterate so ignorant that this will be sufficient uh even though what trump just said is true like again like that's i don't i don't know what to say like he biden approved more uh uh, uh pipeline licenses than than trump did as i mentioned earlier like i you know but um since the, since trump is like such a lost cause and uh People are so sick of him and they don't want him so much, at least other than like his rabid supporters, right? Um, you know, they're just gonna, you know, everyone just kind of, kind of like move on with the discussion, right? Trump can say whatever the hell he wants, like bringing up all this stuff about Kamala as a Marxist, even though, I mean, her, she's not, but her father was like, that's, that was true again, <laughs> uh, but they didn't cover that. Didn't, he can just say all this stuff and she's allowed to just like, you know, um, you know, in a better, more convincing, charismatic way, for sure. But again, like not, uh, you know, it's enough for Americans. They'll be bought and sold by it. But looks like you guys are going to have to learn the hard way um, through four more years about what's coming for us. That, uh, uh, oh, man. OK, let's keep going. Issues to get to. We'll be right back with much more of this historic ABC News presidential debate from the National Constitution Center right here in Philadelphia. Back in a moment. All right, so first uh, first break here. I'll jump ahead in a second. Man, um, man, oh, man. Uh, I mean, we're only like a third into the bait through or whatever. Um, so far, uh, you know, Kamala Harris has shown signs of life, you know, from, from a political point of view, for, right? If I was like a Democratic strategist, right? Or if I was like a political commentator who like, you know, wasn't a Marxist and like didn't realize Americans are like causing all these problems, right? If you were, you know, analyzing from that, like, um, very, uh, like, like limited picture analysis, right? Um, you know, you could be like, look at Kamala Harris. She's got a good pulse here. She's doing good uh, points, raising up good arguments, um, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but if you want, like, my real opinion, like, I'm, I'm really unimpressed so far. Uh, she's got good moments here and there. Hopefully she kind of ramps up at least a little bit. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm not... I'm not impressed. Uh, she could be doing a lot better. She be, she could be going in a lot harder. She could be going, you know, if, if she had a spine, um, she would be able to be more strongly. Con I mean, again, I, I still can't believe this. Like, I, I, I'm literally remembering. I had this clip posted in a previous video a couple weeks ago. Um, I think it's is America beginning to collapse is like the one it was. And uh, 
And I was pointing out in that video that like Kamala Harris grills Biden for like three minutes straight on like busing. And she brings up this uh, um, anecdote how like she was one of the first like girls to be like integrated in some like California program or something like that. I don't know. I mean, she's like 60, I think. So, uh, you know, like the civil, civ- not the civil rights era, but like, <sighs> like how, how do I, how do I put this? Like, like my generation understands that like any person is capable of being a piece of shit but americans and american past and american previous narrative is is a little still focused right now it's still caught in the whole like white supremacy is bad which is true uh and like black americans have dealt with unbelievable levels of oppression and and bs which is also true and like uh, that needs to be understood and analyzed, right? Uh, and so, you know, Kamala Harris very understandably, like, was, you know, a, a victim of, like, racism and racial discrimination, and that's, like, bad. That has, that's, that's bad. That's, uh, even if she is a piece of shit, like, that's still bad, that's still wrong, that's, uh, that's racism, that's, that's inappropriate, um, but what I'm bringing up is the fact that she was tough on Joe Biden, like, in that moment. And Joe Biden was, like, a b- weird, like, senile old man back then. He was barely competent back then. He's just yelling, Jack, just saying everything out loud, talking like this. And he just has to say his points. And wait, like, it's just, he's just a puppet doing his thing. Um, and she was more willing to go in on her own ticket, uh, shared ticket. Uh, like, the person she sh- literally shared with her ticket than Trump right now. I mean, she's got good one-liners and stuff. Uh, and maybe her strategy was to be just like, you know, just kind of like laugh off a lot of what he says, don't engage with it or something like that. Uh, but the problem is, is that it's overcompensating now because he's starting to say a lot of things that are like accidentally true and she's not going to be able to engage with that, uh, because you know, she needs to kind of keep things under the the perception that like, she's the reasonable one. She's the consistent one. She's progressive. She's going to be the one to get things back on track. Uh, even though nothing will fundamentally change. Um, which Biden literally said to his donors, like with his chosen candidate, uh, his chosen VP candidate by then. So it's not like Kamala wasn't around hearing that same thing. Uh, oh man. Um, yeah, I'm just really, really unimpressed by her. Um, I mean, I'm always an unimpressed, like all the democratic politicians are pathetic. This is not like, like I need to like, let's get this clear, right? Like, this is not, I don't have a fucking problem with, like, a woman or a black person or a black woman, like, running, I don't, I don't, nobody cares, all right? Like, that's, like, that's, to, honestly, it's a good thing, right? Like, we all recognize it's a good thing, hence why there's so much excitement around here, probably. Uh, however, it's only still, you know, like, if I said, like, I have voted for Obama, like, I wish I could have voted for Obama three times, right? How is that any different from saying, like, we elected our first black woman president? How is that any different from saying, like, from from borderline racist uh, trying to say that, like, look at this progress that we're making, but then it actually shows how reactionary it really is. And if you didn't need more proof of that, her father is a Marxist and she is not. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't, I, oh, I'm getting so mad. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's mad because, like, she's competent and, like, she's scummy because of that. I don't know if it's because, like, Trump's allowed to get away with so much, even though he's, like, such a slimy loser. He's, like, he should be so easy for any person to just bag, just dunk on. Um, And she, I, I'm just, like, she's having a better, easier time grilling Biden. Like, if, if you're, if she's afraid in Trump of any way, which she's not, but, like, I mean, if she's, if she's, like, kind of uh, caving in in any way, it's, it's it shows. Um I'm, I'm just, I don't know, maybe things will change, but so far I'm deeply unimpressed, I mean, they're both, like, so awful, you know, just because slight, Kamala has, like, 1% more redeemability to her, max, like, 10 or something like that, um, doesn't mean that they're both literally evil, um, but Americans are so broken that they think it's very, very, very important to do lesser evil voting right now, um, and so that's what I'm telling you guys, like, if you want to live in a system where you get to be allowed to acknowledge that your nation is evil and the presidents are evil, but you're going to continue picking them anyways and not change things. Like you're, you are not, you are not the victim. You understand this? You are, you are complicit. We are the bad guys. Okay. We are, we are modern Nazi day, uh, modern day Nazi Germany, period. End of discussion. Hitler, Hitler literally said he got his idea of Liebenstrom from manifest destiny. 
the United States was inspiring to Hitler. Okay, if you, like I don't, you 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 either understand basic facts or you don't. So if like if you're still bitching about stuff, like we'll throw you back in the peanut gallery. Enjoy enjoy warming the bench. Um, should be a fun time. Uh, hopefully you're an adult in some way and you can acknowledge what I'm saying is true. Uh, and so seeing um, I don't know. I expected a lot more. I, I just maybe it's on me that I that I expected more from her, but I don't know, man. I, Trump is just so pathetic in my eyes that it should be so easy for her to dunk on him. But since she is a loser, spineless corporate Democrat, like she's a character right out of House of Cards, uh, you know, she there's there's going to be a dog and pony show to it, a little dance to it where she has to point out all the things he said on Twitter. Look at all the mean, crazy things he said on Twitter, which, again, he is insane on Twitter. Uh, but again, their fundamental policy, her economic platform on her policy campaign, uh, her economic platform, her policies for her campaign, OK, are Republican policies. This is a conservative agenda. I, I don't. Yeah, I oh, my God. Yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, all right. Yeah. Let's just move on. I guess I'm not not impressed so far. Um, I was hoping for a lot more. Uh, you know, a scolding of Trump. Um, and a lot more like heart from Kamala. Uh, and of course, I guess that's on me for for expecting that. All right. Let's jump forward and continue. All right. So we got our first break over here. Um, I don't have any. Uh, like additional thoughts, at least right now, to add, um, other than just really emphasizing that, you know, when Trump says ridiculous stuff like um, immigrants are coming here to eat cats and dogs, uh, I think like Americans' collective amnesia seems to be kicking in because Trump pretty regularly says unbelievably absurd and ridiculous things. Like, on the campaign trail during 2015 2016 his entire presidency like the man's gotten banned from twitter right like his entire like all he does is say insane things um and i think you know as much as like that you can always still be surprised or whatever it shows that there's like some degree of like forgetting um about how you know like the people we just had as president like what five years ago not even, yeah um yeah like five years ago for example like how how do people forget the insanity of that um the regular insanity of it um and i think that has to be because so many americans were apolitical before trump and then during trump everyone saw how crazy trump was and then like when COVID happened that kind of like really like because like you know i mean a million americans died COVID like really shook up the world and so americans are like what the hell is going on uh, and that's how you got so many anti-vaxxers, but at the same time, you got so many people starting to be more tuned in and pay attention. Um, and so I think that's why there might be some kind of like weird, I don't know, maybe like the four years of Biden made everyone forget or something like that. But I mean, Trump pretty regularly does this stuff. So I don't know. It's kind of weird to see people forget that. But other than that, I don't think there's a whole lot to add, at least right now. Um, let's get going, I guess. Right. Welcome back to this historic ABC News presidential debate tonight. We're going to continue here, and I want to turn to the war in Ukraine. We're now two and a half years uh, into this conflict. Mr. President, it has been the position of the Biden administration that we must defend Ukraine from Russia, from Vladimir Putin, to defend their sovereignty, their democracy, that it's in America's best interest to do so, arguing that if Putin wins, he may be emboldened to move even further into other countries. You have said you would solve this war in 24 hours. You said so just before the break tonight. How exactly would you do that? And I want to ask you a very simple question tonight. Do you want Ukraine to win this war? I want the war to stop. I want to save lives that are being uselessly, people being killed by the millions. It's the millions. It's so much worse than the numbers that you're getting, which are fake numbers. Look, we're in for 250 billion or more because they don't ask Europe, which is a much bigger beneficiary to getting this thing done than we are. They're in for $150 billion less because Biden and you don't have the courage to ask Europe like I did with NATO. They paid billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars when I said, either you pay up or we're not going to protect you anymore. So that's maybe one of the reasons they don't like me as much as they like weak people. But you take a look at what's happening. 
we're in for 250 to 275 billion. They're into 100 to 150. They should be forced to equalize. With that being said, I want to get the war settled. I know Zelensky very well, and I know Putin very well. I have a good relationship, and they respect your president, okay? They respect me. They don't respect Biden. How would you respect him? Why? For what reason? He hasn't even made a phone call in two years to Putin. Hasn't spoken to anybody. They don't even try and get it. That is a war that's dying to be settled. I will get it settled before I even become president. If I win, when I'm president-elect, and what I'll do is I'll speak to one, I'll speak to the other, I'll get them together, that war would have never happened. And in fact, when I saw Putin after I left, unfortunately left because our, our country has gone to hell. But after I left, when I saw him building up soldiers, he did it after I left. I said, oh, he must be negotiating. It must be a good, strong point of negotiation. Well, it wasn't because Biden had no idea how to talk to him. He had no idea how to stop it. And now you have millions of people dead and it's only getting worse and it could lead to World War III. Don't kid yourself, David. We're playing with World War III, and we have a president that we don't even know if he's... Where is our president? We don't even know if he's a president. And, and just to clarify they here... They threw him out of a campaign like a dog. We don't even know. Is he our president? But we have a president... Mr. President... ...that doesn't know he's alive. Your time is up. It the, just to clarify in the question, do you believe it's in the U.S. best interests for Ukraine to win this war, yes or no? I think it's the U.S. best interest to get this war finished and f just get it done. All right. Negotiate a deal because we have to stop all of these human lives from being destroyed. I want to take this to Vice President Harris. I want to get... Yeah, I mean, um, you know, like this is, I mean, Kamala Harris's foreign policy experience, but one of the things that Trump does have, as I was mentioning earlier, is like he's spineless and like a slime, right? So he's willing to meet with leaders like Putin, uh, who is actually bad, and like people like Xi Jinping or Kim Jong Un, who are not actually bad. Um, you know, there's all kinds of reasons for this, but like again, let me just emphasize: if you don't trust the American government, don't trust what they tell you about North Korea, China, all that stuff either. Okay, that's all I'll put. Um, but you know, there's some kind of perception that like Trump, uh, you know, since he's in on good terms with Putin, perhaps to like even an um, um, an unethical way, uh, like objectively. Uh, in a way that, you know, <laughs> Biden can be too, uh, or at least with Uc Uc uh, in respects to Ukraine. Um, the desire to, like, actually bring um, an end to the war is good. Uh, and Trump's, you know, route here uh, does doesn't involve, like, Ukraine. Um, I, I don't, I think it's already become an EU member state, I'm pretty, pretty sure. Or it's, like, in the process of, or it's still trying to be that, right? Um... Because for the EU and potentially NATO, no, not NATO, not NATO, sorry, uh, but for the EU, um, br you know, bringing in the Ukraine to the EU is is a very, very, very big deal for Western powers because Ukraine is such a significant foothold as an independent nation from current modern day imperial Russia, um, you know, liberal democratic capitalists, you know, um, I'm so, aren't you guys so glad the Soviet Union isn't around anymore? Um, so noting that there's this kind of interest that the EU will have in bringing in Ukraine, um, that kind of policy is in line with the democratic administration and liberal politics in general, um, being basically what is effectively like, you know, um, like building their own corner of international alliances while still ultimately, um, being coalesced into major powers of the world, right? Like Western society and the global North, as we referred it to, right? Um, because, you know, Russia has all kinds of things that cause, you know, in a very like, um, you know, cause Russia isn't, Russia is, um, is an empire now. It's a, it's a, it's run by Putin. It's, it's, um, has all kinds of problems and, you know, this is, uh, this is the price that they, you know, have, um, this is the price that everyone decided was worth it so that they could stop communism or whatever the hell that meant. Uh, so now they're for oil or for other type or like food. Uh, for example, like Russian uh, food production in Asia is like a really, really, really big deal and significant part of not just Russia's economy, but also their trade within or uh, with local partners. Um, but, you know, like all these resources, right? Um, these are like major contenders in the in the global market um, in, uh, in comparison with Western powers and their allegiances and their um, uh, their access to things like oil or, and other resources. Right. Um, 
you know, because like, what do we have in the West, right? It's like, in, it's like domestic fracking and drilling or whatever, or like the Saudis, right? Or like, um, I think there's, I think there's oil fields, for example, in Ukraine. I think there is. I, I maybe not, but um, if if there isn't like resource, um, uh, you know, basically resource extraction uh, available for Western powers to be had in Ukraine, it's certainly a geopolitical. Um, just by like geography and its position, a, a strategic point. Um, so there's real reasons to kind of uh, coalesce Western powers. That's why you saw so much manufacturing consent for Ukraine support. Um, you know, Ukraine is the underdog in the affair uh, for sure. And Russia is invading a country and that's bad and wrong. And Ukrainians are objectively like, you know, like the victims of like unjust invasion. And I would go as far to say as like the people fighting the war on both sides are victims because they're both being drafted into it without their consent. Um, but it's way more nuanced than that. Uh, and the connections and history of things that have occurred not just recently, but also historically in the Ukraine um, create a situation where this uh, eager association with that nation nation state might backfire, um, but only under the presupposition that like, you know, Nazis stop being valued in society, right? Because, for, for example, the Azov Battalion, right, is a explicitly far-right nationalist Nazi group in Ukraine that's actively celebrated and supported in all kinds of Western circles, you know, as kind of an example of the Ukraine's efforts um, and, you know, context and all that stuff that's going on with the war, right? All, all this is just to keep in mind that it's within the liberal democratic um you know like government's uh interests like the, the traditional status quo not nothing too far right but far right um to maintain like this kind of strong influence over ukraine right um it, they're meant they may not be directly a puppet state but they're very very close right kind of like japan in a way kind of um but you know again more nuanced than that the point is that trump actually in this situation may unironically have more motivation to create an end to the war than uh, Kamala Harris or the, any like you know an administrative members on her team might um, you know have that kind of motivation if they had that instead uh, and that, I mean that might not be true right because Trump is such a liar and, and a slimy incoherent mess like David has to like ask him again for the question like they literally have to continually ask him questions that he doesn't answer he's constant like dude the dude's like, like his brain is capable of like speech, but it's still melting. And you know, I don't know. Like, is there even a competent there person there? I don't, I don't know. Um, just constantly spewing nonsense. What an insane human being. Um, but then there's like these broken clock situations, right? With with what I'm talking about here. And uh, I think this is yet another situation with that, where you know, say what you will about Trump being close with Putin. I also think that's terrible. And all. like, Putin is. Putin is, yeah, Putin's Putin. He's, uh, you know, unironically actually like an international security threat. Like, you know, he's an un unironic, like actual imperial president, or uh, I think, yeah, it's presidents for the current Russia, right? Um, so there's real reason to be like, you know, that needs to end and stop. Um, and so for some reason, Trump's like, let's become friends with that. So it's not like the, any of this, and none of this needs to involve a pro-Russian sentiment, right? None of this, none of this comes from a position where modern day Russia is acknowledged as like any, any shred of moral correctness, right? However, it's very, very, very easy to lose sight of the geopolitical relevance, the nuance, the context of things that happen locally uh, and historically within, you know, Ukraine and Russia and other types of things like that. So, um, you know, I don't know if Trump's just saying that to placate the bases because it's popular to end the war. I don't know. We'll have to see what Kamala Harris's response is here. Um, but, you know, I mean, supporting uh, Ukraine with arms, uh, you know, I, I'm I don't know if Trump did it during his administration, but it definitely happened during Biden's, obviously, right, for uh you know, during the war that's still going on now, and countless people have died for no reason. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll see what what Kamala Harris has to say. Um, I think Trump's still being like a liar, and he's he's. I don't know. Like Trump is so he's such a, like a pathetic loser. Like you don't know if he's ever like being sincere about something or like. You know, like, does he actually want to end the war in Ukraine? Like, I don't know. Is he just self-interested? Like, I don't, you know, it's kind of too hard to tell, right? Um, where, you know, I mean, again, like, the situation might be similar for Kamala Harris, but the historical tra trajectory and, like, the actual, um, you know, things that have happened within recent history are the evidence we have to, like, compare this. 
uh and there is some reason to believe like i just you know i don't know man like kamala harris is gonna win the election like pro- probably like by a landslide she's probably gonna well i mean we'll see we'll see what happens but she's probably going to win um uh it's just bizarre because trump's like experience as president like he had he clearly had at least like one percent retention of the things that have happened um and that like unironically puts him in a position over her that like far-right people conservatives conservatives republicans uh can you know weaponize and use against um democrats and liberals as some kind of gotcha like oh look trump is you know trump is the man right which he's he's not he's a he is such a deeply pathetic human being. Um, yeah, we're only three minutes into the video, and I've been talking for almost nine minutes straight. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Let's, uh, let's keep moving on, shall we? Your thoughts on uh, support for Ukraine in this moment, but also as commander-in-chief, if elected, how would you deal with Vladimir Putin, and would it be any different from what we're seeing from President Biden? Well, first of all, it's important to remind the former president you're not running against Joe Biden, you're running against me. I believe the reason that Donald Trump says that this war would be over within 24 hours is because he would just give it up. And that's not who we are as Americans. Guys, like, again, I, I, this is, I'm becoming annoyed with how good I am at this. Like, she, she is condemning him for and seeking to end a war. Like, I mean, what's she about to say? What's she about to say right now? Let's understand what happened here. Um, I actually met with Zelensky a few days before Russia invaded, tried through force to change territorial boundaries to defy one of the most important international rules and norms, which is the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity. And I met with... Of course, that point's not relevant to Palestine, right? Because Israel has a right to defend itself and there's no autonomous t- you know, t- territory for Palestine, but we need a ceasefire, right? Of course. Again, you know... <laughs> She has geopolitical uh, interests, whether if it's corporate backing or whatever it is, to, to keep the war going. That is literally what she's saying right now. President Zelensky, I shared with him American intelligence about how he could defend himself. Days later, I went to NATO's eastern flank, to Poland and Romania. And through the work that I and others did, we brought 50 countries together to support Ukraine in its righteous defense And because of our support, because of the air defense, the ammunition, the artillery, the javelins, the Abrams tanks that we have provided, Ukraine stands as an independent and free country. If Donald Trump were president, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv right now. And understand what that would mean, because Putin's agenda is not just about Ukraine. Understand why the European allies and our NATO allies are so thankful that you are no longer president, and that we understand the importance of the greatest military alliance the world has ever known, which is NATO, and what we have done. I hope all this speaks for itself, you know? I mean, her point might be correct about how, like, Trump might let Putin do BS, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's true. And she's deliberately saying, we're going to keep the war going so that they can... (laughs) She's... Okay, she's saying like all this, like, I don't, I'm just gonna let her finish.